All right, let's look at var, value at risk. So a statement of value at risk might be, there's a 95% chance we won't lose more than $1 million today. So there's 95% chance we won't lose more than a million dollars today. And conversely, there's a 5% chance we will lose more than a million dollars today, which would be bad. And if we have a different portfolio, the statement might be, two, there's a 95% chance we won't lose more than $2 million today or $3 million today, depending on how risky our investments are. So this 95% is our fixed confidence interval. And the number here is our value at risk. All right, so how do we express this a little bit more mathematically? We can say the probability that the change in our portfolio goes down by some big loss equals, in this case, 0 0.05. And so this is the, the change in portfolio value. This is the var, and this is one minus the confidence. So it's saying the probability that we lose more than the var is 5% or 1% depending on the confidence interval you use. All right, let's work this out for a single asset. So what are we gonna assume? So we have a single asset. Let's assume normal returns. And because we're looking at a daily VAR, we're going also going to assume no drift because the the drift only matters over long periods of time so during the day it doesn't even matter so this means we have returns have a mean of zero and a standard deviation so we have some delta t is our time period So what's the standard, de standard deviation of return for over a delta t time period? It's going to be sigma delta t to the 1 half. This is from uh, normal returns. We've, we've done calculations like this before. All right, so given these returns, how do we figure out the probability? So let's draw a little graph here to illustrate. So this will be a nice bell curve. And this will be returns. And so where they're equally likely to be positive or negative, so this is a probability distribution here. And there's some standard deviation. So let's write, this will be units of standard deviation on the x-axis. And so within one standard deviation, there'll be this much, it'll happen this much of the time. Within two standard deviations, that'll be most of the, the curve will be between two, plus and minus two standard deviations. And then you can imagine, you know, plus or minus three standard deviations is even more. And four standard deviations is almost entirely everything, but not quite. And our question is, we want to get the area under the curve that gives us 5%. All right, so we're looking at 5% losses. And so we want to find, you know, where is this, this point here that makes the area here 0 0.05 and then over here 0 0.95. That line will, will tell us what our value at risk will be. That'll help us calculate it. And so the 95% will be day to day, not losing more than a million dollars. The 5%, this will be losing a million dollars or more in our example. So if we look this up, we can write a little chart. All 
So the confidence and number of standard deviations. So if our confidence is 99%, how many standard deviations do we have to go? We have to go 2.32. For 95, which is one we're using for example, it's 1.64. So you can see here, not drawn exactly to scale, but 1.64 here will give us 95% above and 5% below. Then 90 is 1.28. So you can see this makes sense. So as, as the confidence goes down, if we're only 90% confident, 90% of the area will be here to the right. And the 10% will be on the left here. And if we want to get about half that, then you can see that we go to here. So here to the right, this is the 95%, 5% split. And then if we go all the way to 99, that's over here somewhere. And so here will be the uh, 99, 1 split. And this makes sense because of the bell curve. So these are, these are calculated values I'm looking up in a table. Now I want to get a formula for the single asset uh, var. So single asset var, what's it going to be? So I need some... some uh, definitions. So what do I have? I have some delta is the amount, number of shares, S is the price, sigma is volatility, and delta T is our period. And so what's the var going to be? The var is going to be negative sigma delta t to the one half times s times delta times alpha one minus c. So c is our confidence. We should write that over here. C. So that'll be the 95 or the 90 or whatever. And so what's alpha? So let's draw a table for alpha. So alpha is going to look like this. This is alpha. Alpha is the inverse cumulative normal distribution function. ICNDF, I guess. And you can see that it's, it's asymptotically going negative infinity at 0. So this is 0 here, and then here, this is 0.5, and here is 1. And so alpha of 0.5 is 0. Alpha of getting closer and closer to 1 is larger and larger. So 1 minus C, C was our confidence, so 95%. This is 5%, 0 0.05. Alpha of 0 0.05 is going to be negative some number, and it will turn out to be negative 1.64. So alpha is, is encoding this table up here. And you need the inverse cumulative normal distribution function to, to be able to calculate var here. All right, so there we go. There's our formula. And so how do we get that? This is the uh, standard deviation of returns. Then the alpha part here tells us how many standard deviations we need. And then s times, uh, times delta there just scales it up to what we actually have in our portfolio. So pretty cool. Another cool measure is the Sharpe ratio. So what's the Sharpe ratio? This is excess returns over volatility. So what are excess returns? This will be mu minus r over sigma. So if you're some trader and you have some returns, the Sharpe ratio is a way to gauge how well you're doing adjusted for the volatility of your returns. And so 
R is the risk-free rate as normal, mu is the returns you're getting with your strategy, and sigma here is the volatility of the, your returns using your strategy. So if you compare two different strategies, one might be more profitable and making more money, but if it's also increasing volatility, it may not be as good as the other one. And so to compare them fairly, you can use a sharp ratio. And so var is a way of measuring risk, and the sharp ratio is a way of measuring strategies' performance that's adjusted for how much volatility they have. These are both uh, risk management methods. So this is good stuff to know if you're actually trading and you don't want to lose all your money quickly. You need to know about risk management and sharp ratios. Cool stuff.